Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we're going to manifest dread in standard. You've heard me correctly. The plan is simple. We're going to manifest dread one of these expensive cards as a face down 2 2, potentially using the namesake card to mana sorcery, which lets us manifest dread. Simply means to look at the top two cards of our library, putting one face down on the battlefield as a 2 2 creature. The author goes into our graveyard. And then one way we could turn the card face up is by paying its mana cost if it's a creature or we could sort of cheat on the mana cost and instead flicker the face down manifest dread using cards like a splash portal for instance and that way we get to flip one of these potentially very expensive permanents face up doesn't have to be a creature since we can potentially also cheat a portal to phyrexia in play that way and that's gonna decimate the opponent's board and potentially let us reanimate some powerful creatures out of our graveyard as well so that's the plan in a nutshell and the deck is split up into four categories we've got our manifest dread cards 12 total we've got 10 flicker effects and then 10 payoff cards that we're hoping to manifest dread and then turn face up and then the glue that holds the deck together is the oblivious bookworm a two mana two three says at the beginning of our end step we may draw a card if we do discard a card unless a permanent entered the battlefield face down under our control this turn or we turn a permanent face up this turn so what that means is that we can use a bookworm to potentially discard some of these expensive permanents like itali atraxa and volgavoth into the graveyard so then if we manifest dread and flicker a portal to phyrexia we'll be able to reanimate all of those creatures the extra draw and discard just gives us some extra card selection so we can assemble these different combos and we can also potentially just use it for card advantage if we manifest dread or turn a card face up we simply get to draw a card without having to discard so it does a lot of different things for the deck all for just two mana and this will trigger regardless of us putting something face down so it will happen every turn then taking a look at our manifest dread cards besides the two mana sorcery there's also growing dread which is an enchantment with flash that lets us manifest dread and whenever we turn a permanent face up we can put a plus one one counter on it so a little bit of extra upside and then there's the unnerving grasp which is also a removal spell returning up to one target a non-land permanent to its owner's hand and we can manifest dread there's a lot of interesting things we can do with this including bouncing our own permanents back so we can maybe bounce back a growing dread and replay it so we can manifest again Again, in case we didn't find anything exciting the first time around and then our flicker effects include splash portal only one mana although it is a sorcery at two mana we can use the twining twins adventure swift spiral exiling a non-token creature and returning it at the beginning of the next end step so that's a little bit different from splash portal which will immediately return the card into play and then there's also guardian of girapur at three mana can flicker either creatures or artifacts we control so it can also be used in combination with a portal to phyrexia sometimes if it's already on the battlefield we can flicker it once again to make the opponent sacrifice three creatures and also a 3-3 flyer so pretty decent stats all around and then our payoff cards include a tally which can potentially hit another one of these expensive cards for free and is also good to flicker once it's in play as we can re-trigger the ability and potentially accrue more value then we've got a truck of course can provide a ton of card advantage when it enters stapled onto a very powerful creature 7-7 flying vigilance death touch and lifelink is no joke and then we are also trying two copies of the new Volgavoth, which can also be a nice finisher that has some built-in protection. And then Portal to Phyrexia is some additional removal, since we otherwise don't have much of that. And then also gives us a way to reanimate those creatures to eventually outgrind most of our opponents. And then a mana base gets to play with the new Verge lands, which play very well with the Surveil lands, since they will produce both colors if we have the respective basic types. And the Surveil lands have two basic land types, like the Archive being a Plains and an Island. So we've got two of those. And the extra Surveil, even though it does enter tapped, can also help set up some of our synergies. And then we've got four Porticos, four Hedge Maze, so 10 total of the Surveil lands. And then we're also maxing out the Verge lands eight of those and then a couple basics to round things out so a very simple game plan but very effective and a lot of fun to play as well so let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the play here lots of ways to manifest dread only one way to flicker and uh, i've got two tap lands and no white mana so this one's pretty awkward i'll take a mulligan this seems a bit more balanced we've got all three colors a way to manifest dread, a way to flicker. So I might actually keep the bookworm as a turn two play.
opponent's red black seems like a mid range deck. Take action and then a truck sack can go in case Portal can maybe bring it back. Opponent with a journal. Okay, can bounce it with a grasp, I suppose. And now the bookworm will just draw, and an Itali could be nice if they don't remove it. Percussionist. So it does look like some sort of sacrifice deck. And yeah, the coast is clear for us to flicker Itali. So don't mind if I do. So can attack first. And then I guess we'll use the twins here. Could do this at instant speed. But also want to play around opposing instant speed removal on my creature. Don't really need another bookworm. And then Itali finds Torture Tower Splash Portal. Alright, so Splash Portal, Flicker, Itali can try again. No need to torch. And Itali lets us manifest dread. And then I guess we'll play Nowhere to Run just to have that effect in play. Alright, manifest the Guardian. So now if I were to splash portal my face down card, I can flicker the Guardian, which in turn flickers a tally. So yeah, we're gonna get good value out of a tally if it sticks around. Opponent's got a twisted fealty to steal it. Alright, that's scary. And then I guess they can just sacrifice it to the journal. That's too bad. So we don't get to keep having fun with it. Yeah, that's the danger now against this deck if our opponent just steals all our big bombs. At least Valgavoth has some built-in protection. If they have nowhere to run, they could ignore the ward from Valgavoth, so that's also an important interaction. And we drew a tally, so now what? Flickering Guardian doesn't accomplish a whole lot, so I'm probably just playing the twins now. And then Manifest Dread is good. Discard a tally since we're not casting it. At least the twins have ward, so a little bit more of an inconvenience for them to steal it. But yeah, that would still be quite a bit of damage here. Since I could replace the Cursed Roll with a Wicked Roll. Opponent's going to sacrifice the roll to the Disturbing Mirth. So that's also pretty neat synergy. End up with a 3-2 Hex Mage. And now an Orbrask's Forge, also good in a Sacrifice deck. So yeah, opponent's got some pretty cool synergies of their own. Sack to the Journal, draw. Let's see if we can manifest something scary. Yeah, that counts. So now we can go with the Splash Portal play. Flickering Valgavoth. And attack. Opponent trades for the Bookworm. That's before Valkavolt is in place, so it doesn't get exiled. But that's fine by me. And then we still have the Twins available. In case our opponent tries to steal our stuff, we can flicker it in response. But they would have to pay the ward on Valgavoth, so that's pretty tricky. Freebooter's fine. We'll leave behind a treasure token. So good sacrifice fodder. Opponents looking for answers. And all those cards also exiled by Valgavoth. So we can play them by paying a life instead of their mana cost. But only during our own turn. Forge activates. Happy to block. But opponent's not gonna attack, just sack to the journal. 
Yeah, it's going to be tricky for them to remove Algavoth. And that'll do it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Multiple ways to manifest, the flicker effect, and Bookworms, just a nice extra card to have access to. Now, we are weak to Monored Aggro, if they've got a particularly explosive start, but that's going to be the case no matter what. And Hushwood Verge would be a second green source. Yeah, I guess it's fine to keep. So I don't need to worry about my lanes anymore. Opponent is on red, but no one drop. So could also play the Bookworm, and then next turn go Manifest Dread plus Splash Portal. So we don't give them the chance to maybe cast a Shock to take out my 2-2. And they do seem to have interaction, could also just be a Pump Spell. And what do we find? Another Bookworm I can keep. So maybe a land goes, or maybe I get rid of the Bookworm anyway. Since I do want to keep the Unnerving Grasp and a fourth land I could see being relevant too. Eh, maybe it's just a land anyway. We'll probably draw more lands with double Bookworm. Alright, opponent's red-white. And challenger, so could be an Aura deck. In which case I probably wait on Unnerving Grasp until they load up their creature some more. And then for now, could just manifest Dread. I guess we'll start there and then see if we need to splash portal or not. Or if we just want to surveil. Alright, two lanes. So that's a swing and a miss. And then Portico, I could draw with a Bookworm. Yeah, maybe that's fine. So next turn we have the option of maybe surveilling before manifesting Dread to improve our odds of putting something exciting underneath. Although then I wouldn't be able to splash portal in the same turn. So our opponent is going to shelter by ghosts, so now we can't pay the ward to goes for the bookworm and they also found an ethereal armor so yeah that's lucky with a valiant trigger here so they're all in now we could manifest a portal to phyrexia which would be nice and i guess we could also bounce the sheltered by ghosts itself and then get my bookworm back temporarily so i can still draw a card with it close call just bouncing the challenger would be the better play, but next turn they might have ways to protect it as well. So, yeah, we want to manifest dreads anyways. And then we can wait and see if we want to flicker. Alright, portal to Phyrexia will do. Now they will be able to potentially remove the portal to Phyrexia. But at least they won't have a creature initially. It's a pretty sweet turn. Get to draw off Bookworm. And then, yeah, if they don't have a creature to enchant, they're in trouble. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. We've got our Manifest Dread and a way to flicker. Opponent makes his discard. Maybe one Twins can go, since I would like to keep my lanes. Right, splash Portal, another Flicker effect, so gives us some redundancy. Probably don't need planes. An extra blue source would be more useful. Bandit's Talent, discard again. So next turn I'm tempted to play the Bookworm before we try and Manifest Dread, since we only get one shot at it. So then... The plan might be to Manifest Dread and Splash Portal in the same turn, especially for opponents tapped out. So then maybe the Twins goes, since I do need three lines for that to work. And play Bookworm. Another Bandit's Talent could be annoying, so picking up another Manifest Dread is good. Tap land can go. Alright, this could be a fun turn, depending on what we manifest. And we also need our opponent to not keep up instant speed removal. But just manifesting and drawing an extra card with a bookworm is pretty good. So yeah, opponent taps out for Liliana. No more distractions. So they had kind of the perfect curve for a discard deck. 
Tally might have shown up a little bit too soon. But yeah, gotta go for it. And an Atraxa's not bad. Flicker that right now. Now our opponent can probably still remove Atraxa, so we just want to try and get as much value as possible. So in terms of lands, it's only tapped lands, get the blue source. We've got enchantments. And then in terms of creature, I guess we can select our sorcery in the meantime. So what are we looking at? I do have a flicker effect, I have another manifest in hand. So maybe it's a bookworm has just another good value card. Or I could go for the instant speed flicker, but I won't have four mana next turn. So I kind of like bookworm here. And then the plan could be manifest plus portal, since we don't have enough blue for growing dread. All right, opponent just with a shield root, that's fine. So we can answer Liliana, and then we can discard a tally. Take our draw. And then let's see what we can manifest. Just a land, so not too exciting here. Maybe could have surveilled first. Splash portal, I'm down to keep. Now we could also flicker Atraxa, of course, to get more value. But uh, I'll keep this as a way to flip Manifest face up. Should be getting close to a portal to Phyrexia, which is probably game over. Another Bandit's Talents. At this point, Bookworm can go. So we've got two Manifests and two Flickers. But yeah, opponents on empty. We've got plenty of cards in hand, so... The way this game is going, we don't need to do much else to win. And then, let's see here. To have my two green sources, so I can maybe splash portal twice. But we did not find anything too exciting. In which case, I'm probably gonna grow in dread. These can attack. Yeah, also reasonable to just flicker our tracks out while we get the chance to get our value. But with only four lanes, I'm not close to hard casting a portal to Phyrexia. So I think I would rather try to manifest again. Opponent cuts down the hedge maze. It's kind of a fun guessing game with the manifest dreads. If you're playing in paper, you do need to keep good track of in which order the Manifest Dreads happened. And I guess we'll take another Atraxa. Although if we flip it face up, we uh, only get to keep one of them. Bones at 15 in the meantime, so... Can just pass. Do we even play the Hedge Maze? I guess we can flicker the real Atraxa, keep the other one as a surprise. A refuel. Finding a growing dread. Untapped land. Grasp. And portal. And I guess a tally, sure. Alright, and then... I can bounce shieldred if I want to. Manifest again. And pass a turn. So we are getting closer to Hardcast Portal, but probably won't be necessary. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And uh, missing blue mana. Also missing a flicker effect. So yeah, this is an easy mulligan. Got the payoffs in hands, but missing a flicker effect. At least with Bookworm and Growing Dreads, we get to see a few more cards. So I'll give it a shot. And then if we were to discard and reanimate, would I rather discard Valgavoth or Atraxa? Mm, close call. I'll go with Atraxa. Surveil. Splash Portal's perfect. Now I don't have double blue, so wouldn't be able to Growing Dreads and Splash Portal in the same turn. So I think we just go Growing Dread end of turn, and then try and Splash Portal. 
as opposed to playing the bookworm first. Opponent red white and they're keeping up mana. So this is likely a Boros Tokens deck and they could have some instant speed removal here. So I don't think I want a growing dread. Could manifest dread. Could also play the bookworm first and soak up a removal spell. And I'm fine discarding on a Troxa anyway. Alright, and now we've got the extra blue source, which could help. Opponent does not remove anything. And plays a Caretaker's Talent, so they're probably waiting on a Sweeper. Portal, not quite what we wanted. Alright, so can manifest, see what's up, and then either Splash Portal or keep up Growing Dread to play in the opponent's turn, potentially. And yeah, that's not the best hit. Twining Twins. At least we get to draw a card for free now. Another Manifest Dread. So we do get a few more looks. It's gonna be a lockdown, that's fine. So we can Growing Dread afterwards. Now I guess they could still have a Torch of Tower in hand as a cheap answer. I'll go for a Bookworm. So if they left me on tap, I could make it a 2-3. And yeah, opponent's gonna Torch now, so yeah, they were definitely paying attention. But let's see if we get lucky. And then probably keep up double blue, so I can maybe Splash Portal twice if we hit an Itali. And that's no Itali. Alright, so I guess I'll still Flicker, so we get to Manifest Dread again. And another Growing Dread. So, luck is not on our side this game. I think I'll wait on Splash Portal since we are out of Flicker effects. Caretaker's Talent, opponent missing a token. Two cards left in hand. Next turn they can activate Mirax and pull ahead. And we'll see if they have removal left, so Virtue of Loyalty to draw. Okay, so if we draw another Manifest card or Flicker card we can maybe still get there. Although, we also need a pretty impactful card. Don't know if Portal to Phyrexia is going to be good enough, for instance, but that's what we got. Alright. So, token's gone. And then, we do have an Atraxa to reanimate. If they can't find an answer to the Portal. Brotherhood's End is not going to work, so they would need a Braid. Sometimes you see the 5 mana Season of the Burrow, which can exile permanence. But it's just gonna main phase activate Mirax to draw, so they're maybe looking for answers. Alright, we get to untap Reanimate Atraxa. Definitely looking better than Volgavoth right now, and there's all the Atalis that we couldn't find earlier. Alright, so Flicker effects. Bounce spell, and then land it is. Do we need an untapped land? Yeah, I guess I wouldn't be able to manifest and flicker this turn. So, surveil land could be fine. Although, let's see, I can bounce the lockdown, get back bookworm, twining twins. Could actually be pretty sweet. Yeah, I'll get the untapped land anyway. Draw another one. So yeah, is that to move? Bounce Lockdown, get Bookworm back. Then if they replay Lockdown, they can get rid of the Growing Dreads. Bookworm just gets to draw and discard. Could have been another discard outlet for Portal had we maybe taken a Valgavoth, for instance. But uh, could also just flicker a Traxa to dig deeper. So we do have some options. Yeah, I don't think I want to bounce Lockdown now in the face of a potential Sunfall. But Guardian flickering a Traxa doesn't sound bad to me just to get a bit more raw card advantage. Or we could flick our portal, but nah, let's go with Atraxa while the coast is clear. And then Twining Twins is perfect. That gives me a way to exile Atraxa at instant speed. Growing Dread, a land, and I'll take another Unnerving Grasp. All right, so now we've got a few more options available. Opponent levels up. Copies their token, that's fine. 
cannot exile tokens with the twins. And then, end of turn. Do I grow in grand? Alright, point's gonna sunfall anyway. So we'll stick to the plan. So Atraxa doesn't get exiled. Comes back. Closing out the game is still going to be a bit of a challenge here. May not want to grab all the cards, although discarding a truck set to hand size isn't bad. I reanimate the twins. Can now hit you for seven. Could bounce the caretaker's talents back so they don't get to draw cards as easily. I imagine they have another sweeper in hand. So what's our best play? Can uh, still grasp, but we're out of flicker effects. Yeah, maybe play another twins anyway. And then pass. Can growing dread end of turn, discard a truck set to hand size so we can reanimate it. And uh, could see discarding one portal, maybe. Yeah, maybe we'll actually still cast it. I'll ditch the land. So if they have another Sunfall, we should see it here. Yep, that's too bad. Still have portal reanimating Atraxa, so we're not going to run out of cards anytime soon. Cards and library might be a different story. And we're also kind of running low on flicker effects in general. There's one splash portal left. How many twins? One twins and one guardian. So three flicker effects total is not too many. And a high noon, so can only cast one spell. Okay. That works. And growing dread, finding guardian. Turning it face up will actually pick up quite a few counters as Atraxa finds Splash Portal, Bookworm, a land. And that's probably it. Or we can pick up an Itali and discard it to hand size, or same with Volgavoth. Yeah, that might be better actually. Uh, let's go with which one's better. Maybe Itali. All right, so I'm definitely interested in turning this face up. And then what else? I guess we'll start there. Seven counters hit you. And then I can still cast a spell here. Having High Noon on the opponent's side may not be that much of a drawback. Do we bounce the lockdown? Getting back twins and bookworm. Yeah, that's probably fine since we have more ways to bounce the lockdown if they replay it. And then we could draw a card. I think I decline and just discard a tally to hand size. Since decking could be a concern here. So our opponent needs a third sunfall. And they actually have it. So one Sunfall left in 35 cards. Opponent can animate an Incubator. And we're going to be reanimating Itali here in a second. looking at maybe destroying a tally before we get a chance to flicker it. As long as they don't exile it, it's fine. Alright, we found the twins, so I can use the adventure. Carrot cake we can certainly take. I guess High Noon also prevents us from casting an additional spell, so I hadn't considered that. Since you don't just play them for free, you're actually casting them. So we didn't get to play the twins. 
But yeah, if they have removal, the twins probably wouldn't have worked out anyway. And then Manifest Dread. At this point, not super relevant anymore. Alright, so... Can still sank the carrot cake end of turn, I guess. And then Bookworm, I'll just keep on top. So yeah, Itali, not the best with High Noon on the battlefields. But uh, yeah, we can still potentially transform Itali to try and poison them. Bodon did have a get lost, as it turns out. Now they do have some mana sinks with the talent and the incubators. But we'll see what they decide to do. Can still reanimate a tally with portal, and sooner or later they're gonna run out of removal. Maybe should have kept the manifest dreads just because of the growing dread being able to give it lots of plus one counters. So we still have a twining twins somewhere in the deck now. And our opponent needs to start getting more aggressive here. How close are we to casting another portal to Phyrexia? I guess next turn we can. So that can clean up their tokens. And then for now I think I take it. I guess I did keep a token back, but I could threaten lethal with two rabbits and two map tokens. Although, if we're being honest, I'm probably just casting another portal here. So in that case, I maybe should jump while I get the chance. Their opponent still hasn't cast a spell for turn. It's gonna be the White Overlord impended. So they will still have a token left after we cast Portal. And they've got blockers for the rabbits, but I'll still scry, can bottom the bookworm since High Noon is making it a little awkward. Of course, could always bounce the High Noon and cast more spells afterwards. All right, I guess we can take a free Portal from Itali, and then we can transform Itali as well, only as a sorcery, but then it will be indestructible. Alright, so they need some fall number four, or some other way to exile Itali, so the game goes on. There's no creatures on the opponent's side to reanimate with Portal, eventually the Overlord perhaps, which is maybe why they didn't play it beforehand. We've got 11 cards left in our library, and an Archangel Elspeth will be their play for turn. Makes a token, draws. So they're maybe digging for Sunfall here. 26 cards remaining. Bono levels up, makes another token. Goes for the Life Linker. So we can just cast another portal to Phyrexia and attack. Our opponent knows about it, so they need to find a solution. Levels up the talents. Yeah, they seem pretty dead to me. We'll get to untap. Nothing to reanimate, but just cast another portal. This was quite the grindy game, but uh, yeah, even triple Sunfall couldn't stop us. And there we have it. Poison and regular damage all at once. Awesome, and we get to level up for our efforts as well. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's missing an actual Manifest card. Double Flicker. Mana is also awkward without any actual surveillance or basic land types. So I'll take a mulligan. Well, we certainly get to Manifest Dread. We've got a few surveillance to help find a flicker effect. So I'll try it. Facing black white, so potentially mid range. And Volgavoth, we would have preferred to manifest. So yeah, Archive is not a flicker effect, so that can go. And their opponent's got the Overlord to start filling the graveyard. 
can return Valgavos Faithful. So it looks to be a reanimator deck, actually. All right, Growing Dread, we can play it instant speed, which is maybe a slight upgrade here. And a Bronco can at least block that one. So do we manifest something exciting? We do not. Bookworm will have to do. And another manifest. So we found all the manifests, just not the flickers. I guess, uh, let's see here, what makes more sense? I think we manifest first and then surveil. Surveilling first improved my odds of manifesting something exciting, but this way we improve our odds of actually finding a flicker effect, which seems more important. And a uh, land I don't think we keep. All right, so we've seen about a quarter of our deck. Still waiting on something to enable our manifests. But I guess so far also nothing really worth flickering. Deep Cavern Bat can take a look, probably takes the Grasp. So next turn I could also flip the uh, Bookworm face up, just to start drawing. All right, goes for Valgavoth. That's fine. And they've got their Faithful, currently an Overlord to potentially reanimate. Alrighty, so this turn, yeah, I could flip face up, just play a tapped land and pass. Or we could bounce the Faithful, but may as well just bounce the Overlord after they reanimate it. Portal, I guess, would be good to manifest, so maybe I do keep it on top and just manifest this turn with a regular Manifest Dread. So the one on the far right is the exciting one. And now it's just waiting for a way to flip it face up. Our opponent might be able to deduce that the one on the right is the exciting one, since we actually kept the card on top. When Liliana. You're telling me what it's going to make a sacrifice. This one can go. Alright, flicker effect off the top, please. There we go. Just gotta ask nicely. So, do we attack first? Can send in the bookworm. Technically flip it face up if they just block with a bronco. Yeah, it doesn't seem worth it. Click our portal. And then no need to attack since we're gonna make them sacrifice all their creatures. And then discarding Valgavoth to Liliana is actually a good thing, so surprise they're actually making us do it. Otherwise we could have used Bookworm to maybe get it in the graveyard. Opponents got their own Valgavoth, which explains why, and right to bring it back. Alright, so what do we pick? I imagine it's Valgavoth. What's our plan? We could try and find another flicker effect, so Guardian gets to flicker portal. To once again wipe their board, that would be the cleanest solution. There's nothing that really draws cards other than Bookworm. But yeah, for now Valgovoth seems fine. And a Growing Dread. Could also bounce their Valgovoth back and just sacrifice a bunch of permanents. Three non-land permanents. Actually not that bad when we have Growing Dread we can sacrifice. So that's also an option here. Just bounce Valgovoth, they won't be able to easily put it back in the graveyard if we finish off Liliana. Yeah. Problem here is I guess I have to pay the ward before I get to Manifest Dread. So then I have to decide between sacking Valgavoth or sacking the uh, Portal to Phyrexia, which I guess we keep Portal since we can just bring Valgavoth back. So I can finish off Liliana. Yeah, I think that's fine. So that's back to hands. Manifest an Atraxa. Finish off Liliana. And pass a turn. And then next turn we'll get Valgavoth back. And now finding a flicker effect is good to flicker Guardian in turn flickering portal, since we can flicker an artifact with it. 
or we can just get an Atraxa. So best creature they can currently reanimate, an Overlord, and our portal can also reanimate the opponent's creatures for what it's worth. So this card can single-handedly win us the game. So at 6 mana they can flash back right of the Moth. The Overlord can also fill the graveyard some more. They had a Faithful left. So they won't have the mana to sacrifice the Faithful right now. Maybe go for Overlord. And that works. Mill 4 and Twining Twins is perfect. So we can Flicker Guardian and turn Flickering Portal. And then I guess Atraxa is also not banned to Splash Portal, so a ton of options. Can attack. Opponent's got one unknown card in hand, could potentially be instant speed removal. And yeah, better try of discarding Volgavoth. So can Twining Twins, Flicker Guardian, and then I guess the problem here is this will happen at the beginning of the next end step, and then I won't get the portal back until the beginning of the opponent's end step, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. And then could flicker Atraxa here while we're at it. And get another Twins, untapped lands, enchantment, sorcery, and the our opponent has seen enough. So Guardian will come back, flicker Portal, and then Portal will eventually come back, sacrificing their board, even if they did manage to put a Volgavoth in play. So that's just going to be too much for them to handle. Awesome. All right, so we got to manifest a lot of powerful cards today, and I'm very impressed by the deck's performance. Now, of course, the Mono Red matchup is going to be a pretty bad one, I think, since we don't have a lot of cheap instant speed interaction. So there will be games where we just die on turn two, and there's not much we can do about it. So yeah, that matchup is probably not going to be great, and I don't know if it's easy to really fix that matchup, since you do need very specific answers, and the way our mana base is set up, we have a lot of tap plans coming in on turn one. So would need to reconfigure the deck quite drastically to improve the matchup, at which point it's probably no longer worth playing, so you just have to accept that it's going to be a bad matchup. But in most other matchups, the deck seems pretty decent, and there's a lot more play to it than just flipping a card face down and then flipping it face up. There's actually some interesting sequencing as well. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!